So let's do Alan first and then Ralph. Okay, so I'm going to navigate here. Normally I like to set up waypoints. So I already fight face that way. <laughs> so these are fiducials, they're uh, markers. Unfortunately, the way the ceiling is working is the camera's getting killed and they can't see them. So I can only do limited voice commands. So right now I have a robot that I can control with a uh, with a joystick, but I can also control it with my phone through Wi-Fi by voice. Forward two meters. Right, 300 degrees. So I told it to rotate right 300 degrees. It rotated left 60 degrees. <laughs> 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 the civilians there <laughs> again. <laughs> That's how the singularity starts. <laughs> So that just repeated the last command. Now normally I'd be able to say set a waypoint, and then I could go back and forth to the waypoint if it could recognize the producers, which it can't. So uh, this uh, this is all part of Ubiquity Robots, and our idea is this is what we want the robot to do out of the box. So we want speech commands to work. Unfortunately, it, only, it will work from a phone, it will also work from a laptop through uh, a browser. <coughs> and it will also work with a Logitech controller if you plug it in. We're using a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so it's a $35 computer. It's running uh, ROS. Uh, there's around five years of development into this across 10, 10 plus people. People have come in and come out. And the idea is we want to sell this as a platform for specifically people in this club who want to develop their own robot application. Nice to see you. All right. If you're a cell phone developer or app developer, nobody expects you to have to design the cell phone and the uh, wireless network and the 4GL to take care of that. But if you're somebody who has a really good idea for a robot application, you have to have a platform to start with, and it takes a couple of years to do that platform. So this is what we're doing. Uh, so far we have around 20 of these Magnes. So we're in a pre, I don't think we're beta, we're uh, maybe gamma, I don't know. And hopefully we'll start selling these to an Indiegogo. So if you like this, come to our Facebook page, share with your friends, so we uh, develop a little more presence than just outside the clubs. So what's your initial software to use? This is just using Google. This four way. Have you tried putting this voice recognition software to record Raspberry Pi? Uh, I have not. And the other thing is to look at the IBM voice recognition stuff with the artificial intelligence, but. The thing is, we're using all the software is open source. So if you want to be one of our developers, you can contribute to our GitHub. You can download our code. Matter of fact, you can download our Raspberry Pi code right now and run it on a bot back, which I'm sure Camp will talk about. One of the other things I do is we have a group called SD Ross, Silicon Valley Ross, and uh, we're using, there's a lot of, uh, so is incestuous relationship. Watch your thumb now. Is, is um, Ubiquity, um, is the code for the uh, Pi 3 up or is it still the Pi yeah. 2? No, the Pi 3 code is up. Okay. If you go to a Facebook page okay. or our, uh, or, or our uh, website, mm -hmm. ubiquityrobotics.com, okay. you can download the August and there's a very neat piece of code called uh, that Rohan wrote called Pi 5. So in my house, the robot recognizes my home network. But my home network isn't here, 
so it will default to being an access point. So I don't have internet, but I've connected Wi-Fi from my laptop. You can actually see that it's not seeing any fiduciaries on uh, RBiz. I can run it from RBiz. I also can take the scripts from uh, Patrick Goebel's book, run them. If I say, if I say do a put square, it'll do a square. I can run a teleop keyboard from the thing. So I have multiple ways to control the robot because it's it's running a full raw stack. We can talk about this. Yeah. Add infinite. No, don't. <laughs> don't. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I um, do something that allows you to use your whole body to control a humanoid robot or a virtual avatar with force feedback. Um, so you wear an exoskeletal suit that makes you feel what the robot feels, and of course you see what the robot feels, and then you're also attached. Like the whole thing is attached to a huge motion simulator that moves you exactly the same way that the robot is moving. And so you can use your own sense of balance to, um, to regulate the balance of your robot or virtual avatar. And this is what I call the virtual prototype. And it's uh, back on my screen here. <laughs> right, so, so here on the right you see the user, um, so you will wear an exoskeletal suit for the whole body, but here it's just for the legs. Um, that makes you feel what the robot feels, you see what the robot sees, and as you see, also you're being moved just the same way as the robot is moving. So you can actually regulate the balance of the robot using your own sense of balance. And it effectively, it feels as if you are there where the robot is. Um, and these videos are made with that exoskeletal controller that I made. So um, it doesn't have force feedback, but it has sensors and is connected with Bluetooth to the computer. And I also made a wireless um, uh, VR headset so that I can also see what's going on in, in VR. Um, so these are two variations of the motion base. Um, so on the left is the ultimate version. On the right is the simple version that will work for walking and must, might be running. For sitting, right, so the left one is much easier to do. And as you see here, I'm already walking that robot around and it's walking according to the physics in that virtual environment. Um, and so you won't walk or run on a real floor anymore, instead, you walk on a virtual floor, like which you can more or less see here, that you feel as displayed to you by the feet of the exoskeleton. And that's just another <laughs> version of that. And this is how it would look if you sit. And here I'm controlling that boy. So now this is zoomed out. But that's what I see now. That's the first person perspective. And you can already do stuff, um, like kicking rocks. And all the physics is there. All the forces are calculated. The is there some kind of haptic feedback here or something? Not yet. Um, also, it wouldn't work because it just throws you out of balance. Um, so that's the whole point about the motion simulator. You don't have to care about your balance anymore. You will not fall if the robot doesn't fall, or the virtual avatar. So here I'm trying to be a little bit constructive, getting this flexible swim ring on the Kraken. And <laughs> you can walk as far as you want with the ladder set up. You can do stairs. And you can experience all kinds of physics. Like this is soft body physics happening here and trying to get this robot in the swim ring. And you can fall from a, and you will feel that. And to a certain extent, everything feels real. Of course, you cannot fall as deep as you want. It's limited by the size of your motion simulator. So now the exoskeleton is also new and patented. It's um, extremely agile. Um, it's also very strong. This is my little brother doing Taekwondo with it. <laughs> um, and it's not really hindering him a lot. There are a few things that he can't do, but he just can't do it exactly the way that he's used to. Um, and normally people want to do that. So anyway, so the idea about this exoskeleton is also that it's really strong. It can support your whole body weight. It's really stiff. It can be fully actuated. So for every degree of freedom, you actually have a strong motor. 
And in the footprint of that exoskeleton, it will be more than twice as strong as I am for every degree of freedom. Um, so essentially, you can just swap the bearings against the motor and drive, and then, then you're there. Right, and now it's, that's it. Yeah, so I'm, well, just a little close up. Um, so I'm here now, it's my fifth week for networking in the valley. I'm normally located in Germany, but I want to come here and start this company here. The idea is really to build these robots, um, make them a new standard of transportation and collaboration in competition to cars and planes, so that a service technician, for example, doesn't need to travel a thousand miles anymore, but instead just uses the robot and does its job. Um, and that's very important in industrial settings because downtime minutes in industrial settings go into thousands of dollars. Um, so in car industry, it's $50,000 up per mm. unplanned downtime minute. Of course, there are measures in place to reduce that cost right now. So that might be not the easiest market to address first. So we are a simpler, um, but then there's also firefighting, which um, is a very high value. Like, so you can go into burning building without actually entering it. So firefighters won't have to risk their lives anymore. And if you're in a nuclear power plant, you're not being exposed to radioactivity, stuff like that. And yeah, so if anybody has any ideas how to get this going here, it would be that. So it looks like you have some ideas for your virtual reality side. What about the robot side? Have you have done any prototypes of the robot? Not really. So the idea about the robot is that the exoskeleton already is a robot. So the exoskeleton will be built first um, as an interface for VR. And then essentially you can just make a copy and use it as a humanoid robot. Um, so that helps you designing it. And later on, you just make some better one. Right. So it's all about proof of concept right now. I'm started, I am started doing the hardware. But it is really slow the way I do it now. So actually, it would be better to have funding and people. Um, and I think it's kind of negligence visions if I didn't do it that way. Have you seen the uh, Antibox telepresence robot? No, I have not. <laughs> All right, yeah, you should check it out. So we had something called the QV and the QX robots that were essentially the robot side of that. Instead of VR, we were actually able to operate and do things remotely with hands in front of you and, and three-dimensional depth and everything. Right. And how did you do locomotion? Uh, we had balancing wheels, so two wheels. Right. So the idea here is that humanoid robots can really do everything any human can do. Um, or more, because they might be stronger, bigger, or smaller. Um, and then you have the general solution. So wheels will always have some limits somewhere. Like you mm -hmm. cannot crawl under a machine and repair something. And if it, the repair is 85% finished, it's not finished. And if the person is 95% saved, it's not saved. So with this method, you make sure that it works everywhere, and then also scales very well then you build the same robot millions of times instead of having specialized robots and make a few hundred of them. 